guys. Okay. Um, getting ready to hook up this easy hose carrier. Finally got a chance to come back out. Um, no, I haven't done a video in a little bit. Got a little busy sidetracked. I was hoping to do more regular, but um, just trying to keep it real with everything. This is the easy hose carrier better light on it um, so I have no idea if there's any hardware I know there's these top brackets and they look like they're probably plastic um, so let's see what's in here um, pause for a second and then I'll look underneath where to mount this thing I think it's gonna have to be on one of the rails last time I checked like the only spot so see I brought some stuff out uh, about a week ago, just getting ready for the next trip, which is in about less than a month. Be a one day trip, and then we're taking a trip to Mount Rushmore. So, try and bring everybody along for that one, too. Um, so, pause for a second. All right, so good news, guys. Um, there is some hardware some actual bolts here so um, I'm gonna go I think the best place to mount this is actually where I connect it up you know on the trailer and I need the hose it doesn't make any sense to put it anywhere else so and I can't think of any reasons other than the slide which is not going to affect it a little further down so let's kind of truck on over there Get the hose on over there. I'm trying to do this before it gets too blazing hot. Uh -oh. so me... Just put those tire covers on. Because I need to shore that one up a little bit. It's kind of tough when it's not a lot of room to work with, but that's okay. Uh, so one second here so I'm gonna try and go well I was hoping for that beam right there but that's got a gas line on it that's not gonna work the one right there so I'm gonna have to pick a different beam um, gas line all the way along there that's where the slide starts right there Gas line, slide, up there. So that's gonna be fun. I may not be able to put it exactly where I wanted. Um, that front's not gonna work. Tank there. Um, let me do some looking, guys. Be right back. You know what, guys? I'm thinking it's got to go right back there. That's the only spot I can see. Oh, wait. We have, you have another rail right there. But that's just, just not wide enough, though. Yeah, there you go. Uh, just due to the fact that these brackets are so long. So I think I'm going to have to go right there. Let me see if it will even fit right there. Because uh, I don't know if it's long enough to reach the other side. So one second. Okay, guys. So like happened so many times. Um, if anyone tells you that these RV projects are something that just kind of always go to plan. Especially someone who only does this part time. You can see here. I had to change plans because underneath that tube was not going to fit. Not not on this rig. Not on the 32 KSG. Um, our Stella, we call it, but it's a Stellar by Eclipse. Um, the you know as you saw, all the rails are too narrow, 
and there's no way to put it on the bumper so now I'm looking at the storage bin so I'm taking everything out which needed to happen anyways I did bring some new bins that's another thing is trying to remember everything especially I venture to say a lot of people are in this situation too they probably got it in storage and you got to remember everything that's at the house to bring out so what I'm doing now this is now turning into a reorganization of this front storage area so I'm going with water and propane and some things like you see the extension cord and that one that's going to be sewer only tools and electrical over here for now um, so that's where I'm at and I'm, the plan is to put the tube right along here and so I can get to it. It's not ideal, it's not what I wanted to do, but you know, it's better than some other things, I guess. So, been meaning to do this, and I'll continue on when I get to a point where I'm about ready to mount this thing. So, it's pretty simple to mount. I don't think people need too much help with it, but um, that's the plan for now, guys. Be right back. All right, guys, that's where I'm going with it. Um, I might regret it later because as soon as I put it there, I'm going to lose some area to stack, whatever. But again, I don't have much choice. Um, there again, no area, no other area I can see to put it. Uh, so if I have to remove it later, so be it, but I'm going to run with it for now. See how many, uh, hoses as you see how they're stored now horribly i can get in there so here we go all right guys i got four hoses in there so i think i'm gonna need one more unfortunately too bad you can't stack these things that'd be the only thing i'd say i request from the manufacturer because if they put another bracket on there you could stack them Maybe I'll figure something out, but uh, yeah, because I got four more hoses. I don't want to run in a situation where you got a long run and then you're stuck. So nothing worse than that. Anyhow, got it in there, got it mounted. See the screws, and um, on to the next project. Put the cap on. Put some of the stuff back for now. Um, going to kind of just uh, set it in there do a fairly good job of reorganizing some of this stuff you can't believe that stack of <laughs> blocks I got I think I can reduce that uh, looking at the the different leveling systems the ones that or I forget the name of them they're kind of u-shaped um, type things uh, half moon shaped I should say so I think at some point I can reduce some of those I'll put them there for now probably to kind of put some of them towards the back a few towards the front yeah because we ended up replacing those you guys probably remember that video with the trailer jack block right there uh, which has been great so that's what we're using for now um but used to use a stack of these which wasn't great because we hit you know again check that video out there if you're not level and you're not you know they're smooth on top is what I'm trying to say. And it's that, uh, uh, the jack stand there, it, it can, you know, kind of slide on those. They're just not as good as these, uh, those blocks have been. So anyways, back to this part, I'm going to put the cap on, put that stuff back in and I'll bring you guys back in to see kind of the finish for now. Again, I'm going to redo it, get some more buckets and Always ongoing project with this stuff, guys, and uh, always something to do, but uh, be right back. Okay, guys, um, that's the final organization for now. Like I said, I'm going to reorganize again um, when I get a few more of these, but I'm kind of thinking about it. I don't know how many more will fit in there. So I need to look under the storage underneath the bed, but I think this might actually be pretty good for now, other than needing one more of those for extra hoses. Put it in the comments, guys. What do you guys do? 
I wasn't able to find a lot of a lot of organization tips on the inside of RVs and trailers, whatever. Um, but not, you know, not the outside box and everything. So, you know, these here's my thinking. I need these to bolt up to my equalizer hitch. So I have that have those right up front here, so I can always kind of account for them. You know, again, sewer hose. We all know that. Kind of worked out. I was able to put some of these blocks, which I still need till I get the other leveling set up. Um, put the rest of them back there, and then the tools, propane, water stuff, and then uh, there's one box just for hose accessories, which isn't great either. I really would rather store that somewhere else, but. Um, Short of mounting a box on the outside somewhere, not sure where I can really do that. So I'm still thinking that one through. But hey, it looks way better, I think. Um, for now, it'd be nice to have a light in here now. Think about it too. Might be able to. I think I have a couple of those. Maybe there'd be another project. I'll put one like right here. As a matter of fact, I think I have one right here. I have like a four pack of these things. That's how it goes, guys. It's kind of fun. You like tinkering around. And once you get over the frustration part of realizing uh, it's not necessarily up. Dude, got four in there. Um, cheap is what I was going to say. But it's not as bad as it used to be because I remember doing this like, jeez. 10 years ago or longer it seems like there's more items available nowadays obviously gonna need a battery but I think I'm gonna mount that right there so that'll be a project for another day um, if I could probably use one of these screws over here so I'm gonna leave that right there as a reminder put this back so uh, the next project's gonna be putting those propane things on. I don't think I'm going to do that today. Um, maybe I will. We'll see how I feel here in a minute. I was still kind of troubleshooting the electrical issue. Um, still haven't com totally completed it. It's still kind of work in progress. Um, but what I want to do now, as long as I guess have it along, I know this is for this video is technically for the sewer hose hookup, which is done, but it's kind of how it goes. Um, want to turn this on and see what power I have in there without the other controller on. Um, be right back, guys. Okay, so I've turned on the power to the coach without this other unit on, which I'm still troubleshooting. Again, if anyone knows about these, please leave a comment. Um, suspect it's the inverter controller, but I already have power. And I wouldn't have power to these lights without um, that switch being on. So I'm not sure if I even need that piece. That's what I'm thinking now. Go back in here and see what's working in here. I think I know the TV and certain outlets are working. Yep, the radio's on. Just as we talked about in that other video, go out and go back and check it a few videos ago. So I'm not even sure, you know, what that inverters are. Um, the inverter controller I think it is doing I got power now and I'm pretty sure the TV is on maybe not and maybe that's what the thing one of the things that needs to be on for that um, Yeah, so that outlet's not on. So I got a feeling if I turn that piece back on, 
it's kind of weird certain things run off the battery which is charged by the solar i know that's working so still figuring stuff out guys this is still beginner stuff probably for some of you guys so please bear with me let me just confirm the solar is working and charging so battery condition is fluctuating between red and green so i'm assuming we're good it's kind of odd um and then we're getting 11 to 13 volts out of the solar and everything i know about it it's definitely charging the battery so let me come over here and see if i turn this on which i know eventually will beep that is the problem it's got some type of error. Okay, so that light flickered as if it switched to a different power source. And it's showing me, I'm assuming that's from the solar, now in feeding the inverter. So let's now go check and see what's going on with the TV. Okay, so now that's on. So it definitely powers different receptacles. That's what that tells me. Um, so yeah, the TV is now on. So if I wanted to, I could watch TV and use some of the battery. You know, again, short of short of whatever's going on with that controller unit. Um, and I imagine some of these other receptacles and whatnot are working now. Um, yeah. So, interesting, huh? Really interesting. I'm, I'm grabbing this. <laughs> this is the, uh, guys, this is a few videos ago. That actually took a dump. It hit the ground. I think I was telling you guys about it. It won't. It won't close properly now. I don't want to force it because it, it'll probably just break it the rest of the way. I'm gonna try and take it home and see if I can tinker with it. But it actually fell from up here. You know, like other people have said in their videos, this is like a small earthquake in here going down the road. When you know people are not allowed to ride in here in a trailer obviously because you know it's different than a regular motorhome it's i think they do it because there's no communication back here and it's just not something happened wouldn't be safe whatever but it's seen videos it's like a small earthquake and that's kind of test to it that thing just biffed it <laughs> sadly they're not cheap but live by the coffee we all do especially when we all go sometimes there's up to you know four adults in here my wife and you know, uh, kids and boyfriends and whatever, uh, <laughs> come along. So, um, but yeah, so found a little bit more about the power there. So I know that needs to be on, which eventually it's going to have an issue. So it's some weird error. I need to continue to troubleshoot. Um, uh, let me pause for a minute. You know, guys, I've, you got enough energy to go ahead and try and put that propane thing on. It's starting to heat up. That's what I'm worried about. I'm trying to drink a lot of water. Um, but I want to put that on and I'll just, you know, maybe you guys, this will be a little bit longer video, but just hang in there. Um, be right back. Hey guys, just wanted to do this quick video on the no code genius boost. Um, picked this up not too long ago. Um, Fortunately, haven't had to use it yet, but it's ready if needed. Um, this kind of replaces the old jumper cables that most of us 50-plusers uh, uh, used for years. In the last couple years, these, these came about, um, and they're really great. They save a lot of space. Um, they're probably safer overall and uh, super convenient. Uh, because it's more than just 
uh, a booster. It's got a light on it and USB charger. So it's kind of a safety device too in that regard. You could something you could throw in a a bug out bag, uh, that type of thing. Um, anyhow, so this is the Noco Genius Boost GB40 uh, for 12 volt. They may make one for different types of batteries, but basically turn it on here. Um, tells you how much charge you have. Obviously, if it's low, you would hook up the USB over here, standard USB for the car, uh, and charge it. Uh, that's actually there's two of them. One's one's to charge and one's to to get charged there. Um, actually, pretty simple to use. Um, you just connect your clamps here to this side Cl clamps right in on that side um, and once you provided you don't have a yellow a error here now if you hook the old days you hook the clamps up it was a bad thing backwards I mean if you hook them up you know red to black or something uh, bad things happen but this if you do that no worries It'll give you an error right here and just let you know, hey, your um, your batteries are reversed, essentially. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty handy, pretty safe. Um, you know, most people can obviously handle operating something like that, even if maybe you've never jump-started. It comes with pretty clear instructions as well. Uh, matter of fact, I'll link up the video down in this description. Uh, now you can do a manual override on these, um, and that's right here. And that, that's where you would actually, um, if there's, there's safe, certain safety mechanisms that, uh, you know, this boost has built in that says, you know, if things aren't looking quite right, but if you, in your mind, you know, they're all hooked up right. And for whatever reason, you know, the boost here, its internal safety mechanisms aren't allowing for essentially you to try and give it a jump start. Uh, you can hit that manual override, and that's right there. And that'll allow you to essentially set off the safety, the internal safety mechanisms of the boost and allow you to go ahead and try and start the car. Now, is that recommended? Probably not. But it's a nice feature that they include. No, nice to know it's there. Um, hopefully you'll never need it. Um, again, it's got a light on it. So that's pretty bright. I mean, shoot, look at that. Just See there. LA, nice LED light. Um, and again, you can charge your cell phone off it. So it's like a... You know, a lot of people, they'll carry around extra batteries just... For just in case for their phones, you know, and maybe in the car or whatever you've got going on. But, you know, with obviously keep this in the car, but this could also serve, you know, so you say you lost total power and you had to, uh, you know, have something at least charge your phone to for emergency type situation. So, again, it's the NOCO Genius Boost. Um, fortunate enough not to have to use it yet. <laughs> Uh, knock on wood um, but it's there if needed and again it takes kind of the place of the old jumper cables that uh, many many of us use for many years which you needed another car <laughs> around too to to get the jump and it knocks that out too which was always a big you know a biggie if you there's not always in a second car around so this is kind of like your second car and your boost and your cables all wrapped into one so highly recommend it I'll look at link it up down below um, we'll try and keep these going with some of the other, the gear that purchased, uh, you know, just to, for safety reasons and, um, uh, recovery reasons, towing reasons, things of that nature. So everybody have a great day. Hey guys, getting ready to pull these off and it should be as simple as hooking the gauges in and I'll show you before and after. I need really to get a tripod. I do have an older GoPro. 
which I think I'm going to start using. It's way too hard to try and hold it. And I need to probably learn a little bit more about how to position the tripod once I do that. But let me get this in place and I'll be right back. Hey guys, just wanted to show you. Just got it out of the box. And it comes with actual plumber's tape, which is cool. I totally forgot about that part. So I'm going to connect it here. And this gauge, instead of me waiting, you know, kind of like a dummy light on a car, either something's broken or not, but this leads gives you a little more, you know, like if you put a, for a diesel, you put a gauge in, you could read your exhaust temperature and transmission, which, you know, the newer vehicles give you some of that, but, um, you know, you get, you're not exactly flying blind, blind when it comes to your propane, which is nice, especially for longer trips, so get this in. Oh, so quick disclaimer, I'm not a plumber. I'm not a, you know, propane guy, whatever it would be called. Um, but you turn these off first, obviously. Um, again, you might want to have some professional do this. Use the tape for sure, but um, yeah, just a couple words of warning. Gas off first, then connect it. Okay, guys, so it's on there. Uh, the only difficulty was I had to twist the tank just a tad bit to make sure that this was tight. That that sitting, it's kind of like your propane uh, tanks at home for your barbecue. It twists the same way. But check it out. Now I actually have an indication of what's going on, which is awesome. Smell a little propane. That's weird. All right, guys, so got them both on. Um, just make sure they're tight. This one you got to turn up, kind of turn the whole apparatus up, and that'll make sure everything's tight here, right here. That's the only thing that's a little kind of weird that ends up turning the whole gauge. But you can still read it. They're tight. Um, but it's nice knowing how much is in there. It shows cool days, dry, hot days, how much... So evidently the propane fluctuates in temperatures. Shows we're good on this one. And the other one basically reads the same. So it's nice just knowing um, approximately how much propane you have rather than just kind of guessing by you know how much you used or whatever. But uh, leave comments below. A couple projects done today. Glad to have you guys along. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for, you know, subscribing and, um, you know, being along for the ride here. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.